All right, man, I'm here with Patrick from Pink Floyd. What's up, my man? It's all good, man. I'm above ground and breathing, brother. There you go, my man. <laughs> so, so before we fucking chow down yeah. a little bit for uh, our holiday break, and you, sure. you've, I mean, literally cooked us a feast today. Oh, yeah. Man. Um, tell me my about pleasure. you, man. I mean, like, so crazy. You don't have a culinary ba- background, right? You no, were, not at all. Not at all. How did I'm you get into hack. this? How did you get into it? You were, you were in IT, right? Corporate America. Yeah, well, originally I was, I was, you know, my dad used to have poker games when I was probably about 10 or 11 years old. And, you know, the, all the guys are drinking scotch and they wanted to eat something. So my dad would go, whip out some burgers. And that was where it sh- all it started. And it was like, oh, man, what am I doing here? And I kept going and I got into it. My mom was a big culinary insp- inspiration. Got it. Life, though, so. And so, so, okay, so you're in IT, corporate America, for how many years? And then when did you make that decision to say, look, I'm going to get into the barbecue? Uh, a little under 25 years in IT. 25 years? And what yeah. was the moment that you said, hey, I want to do this? Well, I did I did a, a pretty long st- a tenure. I worked for some uh, image editing software companies, and then I came into hardware, and I worked with Lucent and Avaya and Cisco, and I did the Diplomat Hotel and voice communications. I was the first <laughs> VoIP guy. You know, throwing VoIP over frame relay at 512. You know, I was out Easy, of control. Man. Yeah, Sick stuff with the loosened uh, building right down the road over here. I think yeah. It was yeah, right yeah, down yeah. the street over here. So, yeah, I came through there and then went on and on and picked up contracting jobs. Um, I did apply to Intel, but they didn't want me. <laughs> so. I'm going to pull, I'm gonna pull <laughs> up your record, dude. <laughs> you pull my record. It's there. I hope you You'll showed see up my like application, this. application, but it got better after I did it. <laughs> but uh, long story short, I got kept going and then I got... I worked with Ken Feinberg, who runs all the um, major class action kind of suits with um, 9-11 fund, yep. um, airbag fund. He was the controller of the BP oil spill fund. So BP came to us, and I was the network administrator for 28 offices throughout Biola Battery, Louisiana, all the way down to Key West, uh, 5,000 adjusters. Wow. We had to set up voice data networks within like uh, about a month and a half. So it was a $40 billion fund that I just, you know, I ran that for six years. I, my office was in Key West. I'd drive there every wow. day. It, it was a good run. You know, it was a good run. But I was always cooking. Always cooking. Always cooking. I, at that time, when I got to that level, I was starting to competing yeah. and messing around with it. it. goes, hey, you need to open a restaurant, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> last thing you want to do, right? Yeah, exactly. So, but the IT was a... A structured type of background, which like barbecue is too. Yeah. You can't and, cut corners. You can't cut corners. <laughs> and then when did you cut that cord of like, corporate America, I'm going to be a, a pit master? When I was done hauling all the equipment back from the southeast United States to drop in Louisiana, where the I work, we work for Worley Catastrophe, who was the management fund, and we were dropping off the mm-hmm. equipment. I knew, and I was in French Quarter hanging out, and I'm like, okay, well. What am I going to do now? And my, my, I have a recruiting guy that calls me. He's like, oh, I got another one for you. Here we go. And I'm like, nah, I think nah. I'm going to take it off. Did very well. It was like six years. Wow. It still went on. You don't, you don't hear about those things anymore. No, man. kind of went away. I guess money makes it happen. So so, but, so, so then you just jump in head first? Like, how, what, what was the process? How well, did you the whole thing came down to originally is I would always start smoking. And the original equipment, like, I grilled and smoked, yeah. like I said. I kept doing it and perfecting it. And next thing you know, I'm doing sous vides with steaks and it, just yeah. messing around with all the cool stuff. I was... I looked at food as like um, Alton Brown looks at it. It's like a food science. Yeah. You know, the mallard effect when things brown and char and how it works and temperatures of this and that. It's almost like chemistry. So, uh-huh. you know, I barely got out of Columbus. <laughs> know that, so I'm not good on that sick. But basically what worked into what came into it was I, I got intrigued by that end of it. And I just started doing more and more. And then I bought a Weber UFO grill, and I said, you know, forget about the gas. Let's do some wood stuff. Yeah, sure. Let's start playing with this stuff. This is cool. You know, and if you really get good at that, you really get good flavor out of it and the way it works. And Weber equipment was always my choice. You know, the UFO, the WSM. Next thing you know, people are going, hey, man, can you make me a turkey for, you know, Thanksgiving or something? And I go, yeah, sure, sure, I'll do that. And it started going. And then I'm like, you know what? I got some money. Let me go out and buy, buy a little smoker. Yeah. And I went to go look for one. I couldn't find one. So I go, screw it. You know, tore out all the crap in my garage. And I basically started welding <laughs> one up. <laughs> and I still have that one today. And I call her Nell, but it's like a, it looks like a tank. Yeah. But it's, it, it's awesome. I used her today for your guys' stuff, partially nice. because of what happened uh, with this nice storm that we got. But uh, I basically built that thing. And it ran me about 2500 bucks to build it the way it was. And 
started sourcing my wood, started really studying yeah. guys like um, Aaron Franklin and Rodney Scott and, and Tubby Stone, and I can go on and on. Myra Mixon, you know, these guys are the rock stars, the Dale Earnhardt, right. the Richard Petty's, yeah. and the barbecue. And I got into it, and I started saying, okay, well, I'm going to go to a farmer's market. I'm going to LLC and create yeah, a farmer's market. Sure. And at first, I had, like, barbecue and brew. I'm like, I can't sell beer. You know, I go, what am I going to name it? You know, I go, well, you know, start hanging around. <laughs> I won't tell you what I was doing that night, but then for something <laughs> kicked in my head when I was listening to the dark side of the moon. <laughs> it goes, Big Floyd barbecue. And I go, that's, that's the cool stuff, man. That's something we need to do. So I told my my ex, you know, before, yeah. and I said, "Look, here, what do you think of this?" She goes, oh, "That's a pretty cool name. Now you just got to get a logo for it." Yeah, and I'm trying to. <laughs> I can't draw. I can draw stick figures. Yeah. And I called my buddy who was in college with me, the year I survived in college, <laughs> and I, and I called uh, uh, Eric and I said, "Look, man, can you help me out? He's a graphic artist." Yeah. He goes, "Yeah, dude, I'll whip it out." And he came out with the logo like that. And the logo is, you know, basically yeah. what it is. It looks like Dark Side of the Moon with a pig in it, but <laughs> I, I don't plan to trademark it or copyright right, it. Right, I'm right, sure right, in Columbia, right. Like, you know, really, yeah, yeah. when they send me a cease and desist, yeah. I'll stop. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, we started with that, and I went to the farmer's markets, and then I started competing. Yeah. Like on the amateur stuff, chili contests here, chicken wing contests there, barbecue contests there. Started winning. You know, I'm like, holy shit, you know, this is cool. I'm making... You know, I, I'm paying 200 bucks to get in a competition and I'm making 1200 bucks, and everybody's and eating, and I got a line, and they're yeah. like, do you want to sell your barbecue while you compete? And I'm like, right. sure. Well, that's a different story because then you've got to become health code. Yeah, by, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to stay in standard. you got to be, you know, have a commissary and do all yeah. the things properly. That's the only way to do it. That gets to a different story. But we go through that, and next thing you know, I'm competing all over the state. And I'm getting invited. I win one competition, and you win another one. And they say, well, those are two qualifiers to get you into a, a, a semifinal qualifier for mm -hmm. Memphis in May, which is like, you know, world well, Mecca, championships. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, in it's in Tennessee, Memphis. Yeah. And the other one is the Jack Daniels World Championships, uh -huh. too. And those take place all over the world. New Zealand, here. They go all – they travel. And those are big times. But – I looked at them and I said, I did a couple of them. I went mm -hmm. to the quarterfinals and I did that. I think I finished like fifth or sixth. You know, only the top three get in. And I said, you know, this is not really me. The, every, all the judging, I'm not saying bad against yeah. it, but all the judging is very rigid and rudimentary. It's very, uh, this profile, it has to sit like this. Yeah. If it doesn't taste like this, it doesn't, you know, there's very stipulations like people, they go to certain rib places and they eat ribs, like, and they fall off the bone. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's an overcooked rib. Right, 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 you right, know, right. When you take a bite out of a rib, it should leave a bite mark on it, and that's the way a judge looks at it. If that slides off, they basically throw your box off to the side. Yeah. So it gets very hardcore, and I was like, eh, yeah. I'll travel a little bit, and I started getting some sponsors. And you get great experience, right? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I'm like, I'm yeah. meeting cool people, yeah. and I'm having a good time. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I'm never going to win this year. Yeah. 50 guys, I'm finishing 35th, yeah. 36th. Oh, there's a guy from Miami. He thinks he can barbecue. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> Yeah, and he's not Latin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like sitting there, and, and I just said one night, I'm driving home, and I'm like, you know, man, I said, we need to do something else. We just, let's do, let's start doing some catering. And I was still doing the farmer's markets. Yeah. I had like Palmetto Bay. I had Keep His mm -hmm. I had Pinecrest. I had like three or four yeah. running at one time. It was almost... I want to go back there. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, it just kind of, I, once I stayed away, because in that competition scenario, when you're competing with those guys, yeah. it's, you have, it's, to me, it's like being in NASCAR. If you're going to be in NASCAR, you got to have some really good sponsors and some good money coming. Sure, in. sure. So when Myra Mixon rolls in there with Kingsford or, you know, uh, you know he's yeah. got his own smokers, he's got his own team, he's just... You know, he's got 20 guys running around. I got three guys. <laughs> One, two of them are drunk. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, you know, so they're, you know, it's like, okay, what are we going to do? But we competed and it was like, you know, I was a, a middle of the pack NASCAR team. Yeah, okay. With very limited sponsorships. Right. We were good drivers, good mechanics. But after a while, we just kind of gave up and said, this is cool. We might as well enjoy it while we're yeah. here. <laughs> so so yeah. on that tip, you, you traveled all over. Like, what is your barbecue influence? So you have, you know. Is it more Memphis? Is it North Carolina? What, what is it? That's a good question because really mm -hmm. when you look at Miami, and it hasn't really started until now, mm -hmm. and there's some really, really good barbecue places that are out now that are buddies of mine. Yeah. I'll mention them too, like, you know, Carl from Hate Mondays. 
the guys over at Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all doing it right. Yeah, right. You know, and that's that's the way you do it. Even hometown, I know Billy Durney and those guys. Yeah. So they're doing it right. Uh, I remember Shorties, like yeah, you we probably do when yeah, you're yeah. in the 70s, yeah, you yeah. go under sweating bullets. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was delicious, and yeah. Shorty was there. Yeah. But, you know, as it changed, it changed, and it evolved. Yeah. But, you know, when you get into that aspect of it, 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 it kind of captivates you. Yeah. So flavor-wise, my idea was, okay, this is Miami. And mm -hmm. if you go to compete in the Florida Barbecue Association, yeah. say you want to do it, anybody wants to do it, their profile is sweet heat. Sweet heat. Why sweet heat? Because everybody else, remember, Texas is basically salt and pepper. Right. They Kansas don't do City's more, very yeah. sweet, right? Kansas City's got more of a of a sweeter. No, Kansas City's yeah. more of a vinegar, vinegar sauce, yeah, right. like Carolina is. Yeah. But then you got Memphis is more sweet. So there's different yeah. cross angles of it. So I said, I didn't want to ally myself to one. Yeah. Now, there is one that I do ally with. Okay. Anything that's beef yeah. is done like Texas way. Really? Why? Salt and pepper. That's it. Why? S because that is the process. No paprika. And your the only rub is a Dalmatian rub that should go on a beef rib brisket. Um, I do picanha with straight up rock salt. Ooh. We smoke a picanha. Yeah. So <sighs> that that's awesome. We yeah. cook them whole. You, a lot of people grill them and fire them like yeah. the Brazilians do, which are great. Right. But I you taste mine. It's been smoking for like thirty minutes at a low temperature. I need it's to get amazing. One of those. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> awesome. So I said, look, beef. Texas. Yeah. Pork? It's kind of a cross, to be honest with you, because okay. there's no pork in Texas. Excuse me. I know there is. Yeah, yeah. But they don't do it the way they do it in the other places, like KC and like Carolina or even Memphis yeah. or Tennessee. So basically, I took the cross references of the pork, ribs, pulled being pork, yeah. and, pull, and pulled pork being butts. Um, I started to use the a, a combination of a – well, it isn't really a combination. It's a – I usually follow a dry rub tack technique, which is a Kansas City. A Kansas City, okay. Kansas is a dry rub. So yeah. basically I'm rubbing it down with my rub that yeah. I make. Uh -huh. It's paprika, garlic. It's basically a basic rub. Yeah. It's got a little bit of hints of Miami in it, so to speak. I don't tell you, but, you know, it gets dry rubbed out. It's not a wet rub. It's not brined. It's not done anything. So yeah. it's put in there like that. And we'll take that brine, or I mean that rub, and we'll rub them down a day before so they'll sit in the cooler. So they're just pulling everything in. So I said, pork's going to be like that. So yeah. we'll stack out 100 ribs. You know, we'll stack out 20 brisket or 20 uh, pork butts, and we'll do them all that way and yeah. put them in the coolers. And then the next day, we start cooking them for the following day. So you understand. Yeah, right. A lot of people in Miami is, and this is the way it is, I'm born and raised here. I'm the, Like I said, I'm the last Rojo gringo in <laughs> yeah. Miami. Okay? And, you know, you know me, and we went yeah, to Columbus yeah. and all these guys. But I'll tell you, Miami's not a town where you tell people no. Right. They get aggravated. They get aggravated. They get, they get an attitude. Yeah. They get mad yeah. and they're like, man, you know, I'm like, you know, Shorty's is open. Yeah, go to Shorty's. Ooh, I'm like, nah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't mean to take that attitude. And some people look at me like that. Well, why do you say that? And I'm like, because I care about what I'm doing and I don't want to throw some slop yeah. out there. So flavor wise, pork, the combination of a of a dry rub. I don't sauce anything when I barbecue. Everything is dry rub. Like the the brisket is rubbed with a coarse salt, uh, kosher sea salt, yeah, um, and eighteen gauge black pepper, which is a bigger than a butcher black block pepper. So what that does is that makes that bark on the top. I learned that from Aaron Franklin. He used to wrap his briskets in yeah, in um, uh, butcher paper. And and this process of you coming up with these recipes, yeah. how long did it take you? Like, wh what did you go through? A decade. A decade to perfect just what you're doing. Get, just to get it down, and it would morph itself yeah, out sure. gradually. So till now is I don't I don't mess with it. I don't screw with it. So you you're the last gringo in Miami. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> a, 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 any Cuban influence? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. My slaw's got mojo in it. Nice. Oh yeah, I do. I do smoked wings. That I'll do. I do all different kinds of things. I mean, I make some wicked beans and rice. I do some good palomino. I do some good stuff. I know. I know what to do in there. But the thing about it is, is this flavor of barbecue is is such a unique flavor. And like I was telling you back to it yeah. real quick was people don't like no or you got to wait. Yeah. What do you mean you gotta wait? I'm gonna wait. Go, I, have to go. I, yeah. I, I go to freaking Cafe Volero and yeah, I, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, get, I get right in. What are you yeah, telling me, yeah. man? You know, I'm like, well, 
it freaking rained last night and <laughs> slow the smoker down. Yeah. So, well, you know, okay, what's that? That's my problem. Well, this stuff takes 15 hours to cook. Right. Minimum. They, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they don't, they don't want to hear that. Minimum. My ribs take four. My brisket takes 15. My pork takes 12. So it's it ta- you have to do it at 250, 270, low and slow. So right now, it's, yeah. the business is catering. You have a truck, yeah. correct? Yeah. One truck now, another truck probably, hopefully, we're, we're trying to work out for maybe coming the tr- up. The truck business, mm-hmm. um, like, how do you know where to park and permits? That's a big thing. It's a big thing, Yo, right? Oh, man. Because I was like, how you do you know do... I can park in that parking lot? No, you can't. That's the thing. You, you could do a whole episode on that. Really? Just with food trucks alone. The way the food trucks are, are dictated yeah. and run Basically, my truck, and I'll, I'll tell you where it came from, the one I have now, the pig truck that you see driving around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, goes, Look at that, <laughs> um, it was a friend of mine works for a, a large meat producer, Wild Fork. Okay. He's an executive on the yeah. board and stuff, and they said, well, we got two giant trucks that we built. You know, you want them? Yeah, you want to buy one? Yeah. I'm like, that's a good idea, because yeah. I left the restaurant yeah. previously. And I was like, you know, man, I go, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Made a deal with him, got it. Um, they, they spent 100k on this truck, and, and it's it's basically not a food truck. There's two different classifications. You have food truck, right, with a the, kitchen, and then the yeah, not. Then you kitchen. have a yeah, exactly. Right, right. You have one which is a f- FMV, a full mobile or FMC, full mobile right. commissary. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a full mobile commissary. So like I could have another cook come in there and cook, take their stuff out, and yeah. it'll still be legitimate. It's a rolling commissary. Yeah. So that's why I bought that because then I can go okay. My I have a guy that makes my sauces in there. Got and, it. It kind of feeds off each other, and it works that way. So that's a, the logistics of navigating of where to put the freaking fruit truck is, is this. And I'll tell it's just it's honest. It's straight up. Don't try anything on the east side of Dixie Highway. Why? You're dealing with a lot of municipalities. Yeah, and and then all of, they just want to bust your balls. Permits. Right. Permits. Permits. I need a permit. Yeah. What do you need a permit for? You don't need a permit. I, I, I'm legal in the state of Florida. Yeah. Is if you say yes in the property, I can go in there, but the uh, we're 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 so and so municipality. And I've dealt with all of them. Yeah, we need this, and you can only, by the way, get seven permits per year. <laughs> yeah. So why exhausting. am I going to park there? Park what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, I mean, you're going to run me out of here in two months anyway. Yeah. So right, what, I'm out of here. On? Yeah. Park on the west side of the highway, of Dixie Highway, or even 95. Here up here, you're not bad, but yeah. as the south end of town that I'm speaking of. So, but do you park in the same spot every time or no? We, I'll tell you where we park. We park, we've been parking now at uh, on 124th Street in South Dixie in Pinecrest. Okay. Now, not on the east side in Pinecrest. We're on the west side of the highway. Interesting. Which is the Sanctuary Marijuana Dispensary. <laughs> so you go there and then you get some, some, some Never, barbecue. You go yeah. there for <laughs> medical medicinal purposes and you grab some barbecue on the way out. It's kind of a win-win. Very, very strategic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a marketing thing. Yeah, I did yeah. that. I did that too. I've done, I do the the um, the medicinal hop. I go to that one, Carolina. <laughs> Different times of the yeah, day. Yeah, you just follow around. So, But it works. So we're there pretty much. Uh, the truck's getting a little tweaked right now. We're adding some more things to it. Uh, next week, it'll be out there five days a week there. What now the, I've got an online system. You can go order from there, pick it up, and he- head out and do it too. Yeah, so that's so one of the things I found interesting about, about you, you're very active on social media. You oh, have yeah. thousands of followers have to, and yeah. the updates. You do it yourself. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you drive. <laughs> I drive and, people crazy. And you drive the traffic. <laughs> like Half you, of my family hates me. <laughs> <laughs> But you're actually great. It's very funny, very well, engaging. I try to stay edgy as possible. Super edgy, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm still, you can fall over the edge, and I believe me, I get a lot of comments yeah. like that, and I get a lot of, you know. Yeah, everybody uh, gets a lot, of, yeah. a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I get those, but I kind of like tell people, like, why do you say that? Why do you do this? I'm like, well, why are you watching? Right. And I have, I go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, did you ever listen to that guy before? He was a DJ. His name was Howard Stern. Yeah. People used to sit on the phone for like five hours just to tell them they hated them. Yeah, right. Okay? But, but they, they still listen. listen. <laughs> they would be there tomorrow to do the same thing. Yeah. So it's like, why are you going to sit here and do this? If you don't like, no, your food's awesome, but why, why are you showing people with flipping birds? I'm like, it's Sean Connery or Liz and it's Liz hilarious. Taylor. It's hilarious. It's like, I'm not, you know, it's, it's just superficial kind of thing. And the funny thing is the bird, mm-hmm. which has been around since 1800s <laughs> right. or whatever, um, was the way that our, we had 15, 18 employees when we had the restaurant down there. You get there at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, 
You're getting you're a lot of birds. You're not real cheery. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, good morning. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's where the, the advertising I found out, like, holy. And it works. If I go, boom, next thing you know, it's, well, get, it's that, gaining traction. That's how you know? I heard about you. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know my brother, but I, yeah. I knew about you through social media. Right, right. And and then I knew you were a Columbus guy. Sure. Uh, but one of the guys that you post a lot about is Anthony Bourdain. Oh, yeah, And man. so you were a big yeah. fan. Big, oh, is big he time. had a big influence on you? Met him before, too. I met no him in, in Club Deuce. Well, I was probably Club about, Deuce, yeah, which Club is a great Deuce. bar. <laughs> awesome bar, yeah, a great bar, still a great bar. One there. of the only bars that's still around, and really. And it's been there, what? 100 years? Oh, no, not almost. Yeah. It's, it's probably been there 70 something years, I can imagine. I can't remember. It's a great old Yeah, bar. it is. It's just like, you know, way Tobacco Road used to be and all yeah, that dude. stuff. You can find all different forms of life in there. Yeah. And I remember one night being in there, going out, and this was early 90s, late 80s, and he wasn't huge back then. Right. But he was, I knew who he was. Yeah. You know, like uh, Thomas Keller and, and, and Marco Pierre White. Yeah. I followed chefs. Okay, I that's so you've I always re- had this little food bug in you. I like my favorite chef. I love Bourdain, but yeah. my favorite chef is Marco Pierre White. And okay. Marco Pierre White is it taught Gordon Ramsay. Actually, made him cry in the corner. Really? Yeah. No, this guy's a rock. The original rock star uh-huh. chef, and he's such a rock star that he had a three Michelin star rating in in Europe, and gave it back. Because he told, he's, they go, well, why are you giving it back? This is gold. You know, yeah. It follows you around wherever you go. He goes, I don't want it. I'm like, why? He goes, I don't need a tire company grading my food. Wow. So he basically, you know. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And that's basically what it was. And Bourdain was the same kind of way. But when I met him there, it was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> just like two people at the bar. And he's this tall, lanky yeah. dude smoking cigarettes, drinking a scotch. And I sit down. I'm like, I never seen He goes, nah. I look over. I'm like, I noticed his tattoo. Yeah. And I go, you went to CIA, didn't you? And you know, he yeah. goes, "Yeah." And I go, "Are you Anthony Bourdain?" He goes, "Yeah." I go, "You low, you know, yeah. La Hellas, your brasserie." He yeah. goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I go, man, thank, pleasure to meet you." He goes, "Hey, good to meet you too." You know, he, he wasn't like, yeah, yeah. he didn't, he wasn't on TV and stuff. Yeah. Had a cocktail with him, very nice guy, and uh, he was a big influence after that because I I admired the way he had a perspective of life. Yes. But he was an insanely good chef. Insanely good. Um, read Kitchen Confidential. You know, it's on my to-do list. You gotta I, read I this. love him. I, I I think it will bum me out because I'm I'm sad he's gone. It's not a bum me out type of book. No, not, yeah, not at all. Yeah, of course yeah. not. I, you but know, like Road Runner, the movie. movie. You might, have you seen Dude, the movie? Dude, it was yeah. horrible. I, I mean, and it's tearing your heart out. It's you tearing know? your yeah, heart out yeah. that that guy passed. But these guys, if you look at this, and, and these kind of things, is I, I get a rush. I'm already jumping around. I can't. People look at me and think I'm, you know, I'm on drugs or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I look like this because I'm catering 20 hours a day. <laughs> and I sleep four or maybe two, yeah. you know? And, and Red Bull's my friend, you know? <laughs> so it's like, in this business is rampant with that stuff. Right. You know, he had big pro- drug problems. Yeah. He had all this kind of pressure. You keep weird problem. hours. Oh, man. The pressure the, cooking. The, yeah. the people you're working with, it's the biggest backstabbing business in really? the world. Oh, God. why? Because... A lot of theft, right? Oh, theft is ridiculous. Yeah, the, you turn your back, you can turn around one time and, and have a, a huge amount of, of your inventory gone when your eyes close. That's terrible. Now it's a little bit easier to control because of surveillance and yeah, all yeah, the yeah, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the the problem with it is, is that a lot of the people now don't want to work. And this is a very hard, difficult yeah. industry. It's not, Labor. don't get me wrong, it's not like I did the office thing for many years. Yeah. But man... It, you know, five o'clock in the morning, you're there. Yeah, okay, man. boom. It's that. It's it's a grind. It's it's military. It's drill. Yeah. And if you don't do it right, and I'm late an hour, you're the food can be awesome, but you're gonna be pissed. You you're know, and that's pissed. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I no, have and to, it's a physical. I job. take it to heart. Yeah, you're, it you're is. Picking I, up stuff. I stay you're, in you're, shape you're there. In front yeah. Front of a hot, a yeah. hot stove. Uh, all this. Yeah. So I didn't know this. You're such a big foodie. Who who are some of your food, your chef influences? Well, Pierre, really, Marco okay. Pierre, and and, and Bourdain. Um, you know, Gordon's cool. I yeah. like Gordon. I, I mean, he's these are all celebrity chefs now. Right. Um, there's a lot of great chefs that I like. Uh, one of my, he, he's a really good friend of mine, mm-hmm. and um, and I'm, I'll drop his name. He has the only from now on. I understand the only Michelin starred restaurant in Miami. Okay. Um, at Stubborn Seed. Jeremy Ford. I haven't gone, yeah. Jeremy Ford is a really good friend of mine. Shout out Jeremy Ford. <laughs> um, he he is he used to come into my old place. Huh. 
And another chef. Tat, tatted up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, it looks like a chef. Yeah, it looks bald guy, cool as shit, yeah. hanging out by the bar, drinking scotches, drinking, smoking cigars. Kids are playing over there because that's what our place is. Right. Like, I was the only kindergarten with a bar. You could have your kids there and you could have your mom and your yeah. grandma and your dog. And, you know, it was cool. So we were sit there and I recognize him. I go, again, another chef. I go, are you Jeremy Ford? Because he won Top Chef. Okay. Oh, he, he's, he's he's gone through he's got, Yeah. He works for uh, Gros Bay and for Regatta yeah. and mm-hmm. all those guys. So Ignacio, Manicale, mm-hmm. and those guys. So he just became this, you know, what, Beauty and the Butcher. Uh, yeah, also yeah, yeah. He has yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And he's got another one up in uh, in West Palm. So I asked him, I said, are you Jeremy Ford? And he goes, yeah, man. And, they, and I go, no shit. He goes, I go, what, what, are you, what are you fucking doing here, man? <laughs> he goes, I like Bro, I love your barbecue. There man. you go, yeah. man. So it's, it's like, you know, and, and I, it was, oh, no. It's like, holy crap, man. No way. Really? And he goes, yeah, dude. Give me a bag of that shit. I'm taking it home. And he goes, forget it. Give me, I'm going to eat it now, and then I'll take a bag home. And he would show up weekly. Yeah. You know? And he's one of these guys. He's doing a farm out in the Redlands for farm to table. He's very cutting edge and very on top of his game. But he's always checking in with guys like me, and I check in with him. And, and we're always... Touching base. You built a good community, a good network, which is super yeah. important, right? Yeah. And you, you said it, the, the restaurant business has a lot of yeah, backstabbers. Man. Yeah. The be- the friends you make in that business, yeah. keep them. Keep them, yeah. Keep them. The good chefs, keep them. The good servers, the front house, the back house, everything you could possibly do, you keep them. I mean, I've been in the restaurant business now, catering, restaurant, sure. all that stuff, five, six years, yeah. over the 14, 15 that I've been doing yeah. it. And I, I can pull my phone out. You need a bartender? Boom, got boom, one right boom, here. Boom. You need a you need a, 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 a dishwasher. Boom, got one right there. Yeah, you, but these are the people that are like, you make an allegiance with them, you work with them, and like Bourdain used to say, and I have a lot of cuts of Bourdain on a my ton, page, a ton, yeah, where you show up for work on time, you care about the people you work for, you care about your job, you don't fuck around, yeah, and you get the job done, and that's it. And there's a saying in restaurant business is mise en place. In French, it means everything in its place. So when a person gets there, like you go to Joe's, perfect example, or you go to Christie's, or you yeah. go any white glove, and you go in there, everything is here. Here's there, boom. As soon as you eat, the thing's getting Assembly straight. line. Man, oh, man, thing. it's it's. Have you beautiful. watched the show The Bear? Oh, yeah. yeah, I, love yeah. I love it. And how yeah. real A lot of people told me that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, uh, this show's perfect for you. He is. He's good. I like him. I, I, I mean, think it's, it's real, realistic. That, I, that's what I it's like. I think it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a little Hollywood, but what yes, else? Yes, it's Hollywood stage, but I'd say probably at 75% of it. There's a lot of, yeah, there's some good stuff in there. You know, a lot of the business end of it, like he's going through, and yeah. the different things like yeah. that is what people don't see, you know, and that's the big it's thing. A tough the, business, man. You you know you go you go to bed at night, you go home to your kids, you go home by yourself, your dog, whatever yeah. you do, it, this shit hangs with you yeah, all man. the yeah. time. I'm like I wake I'm wake up I can't I don't even set an alarm anymore. I go to bed and I wake up at four o'clock in the morning regardless. Bam, you know tomorrow yeah. I know I got six catering jobs I got to do. I've got three guys down there going, and then what happens is you keep these people around, yeah, and they like it because I they're they're basically hired guns, yeah. They are um, ten ninety nine, yeah, contractors, and I'm like, how much do I get for this? Oh, for this catering job, yeah, keep them bucks. engaged, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, man. I get it. so, but right. these are older. This is Gen. This is Gen. It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I got plenty it's of them. Not, yeah, it's yeah. Gen. You know, this is these are people. That are our age, or you know, that are or or even younger guys, yeah. and I have a bunch of younger yeah, ones man. that relate the same way. I I think there's a big problem. Like, you you saw what's his name, um, Tariq Hill, the other yeah. day said something about on online about how our our kids are all screwed up, man. Total dude. You, know, we you did got some kid out there. I'm doing YouTube videos, and he's making eight million dollars yeah, every six months. Come on, man. Something's <laughs> wrong. You know. I mean, really, dude. I mean, you know, I I'm not going against it. I think that's an open uh, that's a, the way business is run. Sure. You can do it, and and with the advent of the internet, everything's a wide open wild, it's wild a wild west. Yeah, but know? with it comes a lot of opportunity. That's oh, why. That's yeah, why it's it's, yeah. it's awesome. All right, so you're very passionate, obviously, about food, <laughs> so M- music too. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, are, are are you a musician? No, 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 no you're no. not. I tried. I'm, I played I'm assuming drums for a while. <laughs> uh, I bugged the shit out of my neighbor, and that was the end of it. I'm no, assuming it, uh, Pink Floyd's your band. Right, yeah, I that was going to say something really rude, but I will say No, go for it. Go for it. I play skin flute. No, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so my dad made that one. Your dad made yeah. that one. <laughs> No, the, he also so, told me I wouldn't be a good robber or, or a, a hijack guy with the freckles and the red hair. <laughs> yeah, they spy you out, especially in Miami. Like, like dude, oh, don't start that. The one redhead in Miami. So, Pink Floyd, um, has anybody from the organization reached out to you? No, not at all. No. I don't think they care. No, of course yeah, they don't care. They don't care. care. It's, it's, I think it's, they like it. They totally you know? like it, yeah. man. Totally, totally. I mean, it, it, to me, it's... it's it's really, I'm not going to push it out to franchise it. I'm not no, going man. there. I'm having fun doing this. You know, like, there's franchise places that are good. You know, Famous Dave's is not bad. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, you got other places. Like, it's not the know, same, though, man. It isn't. It's yeah. factory. It's factory, yeah, 100%. Yeah, you know, 100%. They, got a, they got an electric smoker, a gas smoker in there. Yeah. But they're, it's, it's just processed. This episode is brought to you by Buena Vista Creative, Miami's premier digital marketing agency. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com for more info on how Buena Vista can help your business increase revenue and create the brand and digital presence it deserves. Video and podcast production, web and app development, search engine and social media marketing, logo creation, outdoor, print, swag, and more. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com to learn more. So question, how often do you eat barbecue? Um, every day, pretty much, like I just said. But I, I do because I have to taste everything. So you taste something, but when Everything. you like, Anything how often goes do you, out of my do you sit taste. down and go, "I'm gonna make myself a plate of brisket, blah blah blah," you know, whatever? No, never, no, because I'm around it all the time. Yeah, and it's not that like, I'll, I'll, if I take a brisket and I go to a party and I'm hanging out with somebody, I will eat it. You'll eat it, of right. course. Yeah, I love course. it. I mean, it's delicious, but it's like, how much filet mignon can you eat? You know, exactly. I mean, you ask Jeremy, the chef we talked about. I mean, he's. He's making tweet. I call him the tweezer chef. Don't get pissed <laughs> off at me. He's like, "You're a smoke brother." I'm like, "You're a tweezer." You know, he goes, "I go, can I have ten more of those?" You know, the little yeah, 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 yeah. But that 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 just gets to the the flavor of the cooking and 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 doing all that stuff. But tasting it, I have to taste it. You got to taste it. I right. got to taste it. I look at the rib and I go, "God, it looks great." And I'll tell you a quick story. I when I first started, I got some of my first catering jobs. And I screwed up big time one time. I just eight hundred dollar order. I won't tell you who it was for. <laughs> but I had geniusly was using my Weber uh -huh. cooking backup stuff. And then I had my other smoker yeah. and I had bought some wood. Here's a key. I tell people all the time, how do you do this? How do you do that? I can tell you the wood, the spice, the temperature, how to cook it. How long it's going to take, yeah. but your shit ain't going to come out like mine. I promise you that. And everybody comes back and they go, dude, what do you do? I'm right. like, oh, it's just it's just the process. Sure. It's quality. I tell everybody, too. It's quality spices, rubs, meat. Um, then you can get to the, the, um, the consistent level. Mm -hmm. Because if you eat my ribs like you will, and you come back two months later... They better taste as good as they did last of time. Of course, the consistency is key. Yeah. That's the big thing. Once right. you get those two things, uh -huh. you can go to quantity. Got then it. you can start jacking up the level. And that's how you scale it. And that's how you scale it up. But you have to get rigid yeah. on that type of mode like there. So so it comes back into that. It's it's kind of a weird thing where you kind of look at it in, in, a, in a circumvent type of thing where it's like, okay, this is all what it takes to get this stuff done. Yeah. So, yeah, I got to taste it. I got to eat it. You know, I I, got, I want to. I can smell it. I can, I know the rubs right. I have one guy that does all my rub. You know, and I have a, another pit master. His name is actually Pit. It's, it really, his name's Pit. His name is really Pit. <laughs> pit Bull, but yeah, but uh, he um, he was before other pit bull. So um, he does everything for me. So he's my assistant pit master. So when people say pit masters, if you go look at pit master as a job, yeah, you can if you're good. You can go get a seventy-five thousand dollars pitmaster really? job in Texas. No way. But you got to have some background, and you better know. What and you, you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah you can't. You can't screw that. Can't up. Just show up. So tasting it, yeah, love it. Good steak, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Every other hell day, yeah. baked potato, yeah. um, uh, fish, uh, veal chops, lamb chops. Um, it's the best, man. Yeah, and, man. And grilling vegetables, grilling I, stuff. I should have done the, this episode at your office. First of all, so I can meet cool. Pitt. Yeah, we can do it next time. <laughs> and we're not on the telephone pole. Yeah, and, and, and if you ask me, you go, what does the guy who owns 
pig fluid look like? It's you. It's literally it's you. Me. I would draw you. They call me the pig. That's they, what they call you the pig. All right. A couple of rapid fire questions Got because uh, I could talk to you all day about this. Me too. But the food's waiting We'd outside for me. have to get some beers or something. Yeah, and, and, and I'm starving. <laughs> but the next one we will do at your office. Excellent. I mean, at, at your office. I'll at, bring the scotch. At your restaurant. All right. I'm in. All right. Rapid fire questions. Better album, The Wall or The Dark Side of the Moon? Uh, dark Side of the Moon. Dark Side of the Moon. All right. Have you ever done the dark side of the rainbow? Do you know what that is? Which is when you play the dark side of the moon. And yes, I have with uh, Wizard Oz. And what do you think? I've never it done works. It. it works. It works. You have to start it right when the lion roars. You have to start it right when you the lion. You start the movie yeah. right when the lion roars from uh -huh. the MGM lion. Yeah. And it sinks perfectly. You're kidding me. Nope, swear to God. Look it up. All right, I got to check. And look, you'll see them when they dance off, and you'll see them going down, and the music's playing the same way, man. All right, you can have dinner. I think it's timing. I think it's 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 a timing thing. But they but they say it's bullshit, right? That like I they didn't that Pink Floyd uh, Pink Floyd never said that they did anything to it. They go, it's a random thing. Yeah, I mean, and think about it. When they were making that music, yeah, you know, the way we make music now is all through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, know, yeah. you can make your own stuff right now. These guys had a, you know, a twenty four track board. That they can only work with so many things. So really, I don't think they yeah. were watching the Wizard no, of Oz lining it up. You if, know. if I recall, you probably know is is uh they got dropped by their record label yeah. and then they locked themselves like in a, for like a month. Yeah. And they just yeah. like and they hand yeah. they, they, literally the greatest album. Well, a lot of people don't know and they don't know about Sid Barrett. Who was so Barrett, right? Right? <laughs> there's a Sid Barrett question on here. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so uh. You get to go to dinner with David Gilmore yeah. or, or Roger Waters. Who do you pick? Gilmore by all the way. <laughs> Gilmore. Why yeah. Gilmore? Gilmore to me is is the the both of them are the geniuses part. Of course. And Nick Mason and yeah. Rick Wright, all of them are. Yeah. It, it takes all of them to do it. It's like Led Zeppelin. It's magic. Are they good without Jimmy Page or with Robert Plant? No. Yeah. no or John right. Bonham? No. Yeah. Or, it doesn't know, work without John Paul Jones. No, yeah. they're all good. Right. Yes. You got all include in there, but Gilmore by just him, his musicianship. The, the 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 he's one of the best guitarists around. Right, top twenty easily, yeah. top fifteen, ten, whatever you want to call it. Um, I admire musicians like that. Neil Peart from Rush. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite guitarist of all time is Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, which to me, I think he's the greatest guitar player of all. He's the fantastic. Time. And but if I had to sit down with a dinner, it would be Gilmore because I've I follow Gilmore on social media. Uh -huh. And I just like to hang out at his pad, and he's got a vineyard, and I think it would be really he, he, cool. He sounds like a better hang. Than yeah, yeah Roger I, Waters is very angry. Right, <laughs> yeah, he's an angry dude, and he's traveling a lot. Yeah, and, you know. And I, to be honest with you, he he was the genius behind the wall. Yeah, he was genius. But you remember, Gilmore was brought in, you know, right be, after, during you know when Barrett was leaving all right. that stuff. So you know, Gilmore, you, you nobody plays the guitar like that. That black strat sold for like what four million dollars or three million dollars, yeah. and the only one that beat it was Kurt Cobain's uh, acoustic yeah. for like six. Yeah, that played on there. So if it was between Gilmore and him, I'd probably have. All well, right, I, you, I'd have dinner with Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get to serve the dinner. What's the food you're serving him? Oh, that's what a good serving? one. That's a good one, man. I think if it was Gilmore, I think it'd have to be something like you know, like a. a it'd have to be a steak it'd have it'd to have be to a steak, steak okay. in there and there'd have to be some kind of really good like uh because he's uh, a wine guy yeah he yeah, is so right. it's, he's gonna like the palate thing that's where i'm going with yeah so you could be switching the meals around so i think there'd be a lot of it i think there there'd be a a, a meat a, a seafood one a little bit of everything i've had people come over that yeah. are technically celebrities and they try a little of this and lie that, yeah. and I think that would be cool to do that. But the one thing I'd I'd like to make the guy probably a stuffed lobster tail. Whoa, yeah, smoked. There's yeah. a lot more to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're an interesting character. We're gonna have to do stuffed part like two of, of, this, of this interview. And, and All right, shallots. <laughs> I told you I got a Sid Barrett question. Yeah. Sid Barrett stays in the band. Do they still make all those great uh, albums? Well, you, you look at the albums that he did. Mm -hmm. They were very, very cutting edge. So, I don't think so. I'll be honest with you. He I, held Roger Waters back. Yeah, he yeah. did. He held Roger Waters back, but you wouldn't have the advent of Gilmore, too. Correct. Correct. So, he didn't leave. There, there's, there's no, you know, I think, I think it was timing. Now, he's, as a lyricist, was great. Right. But... You play with that pudding too long. You know, <laughs> you fried bro. your brain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you seen Pink Floyd? Uh, I saw them twice. 
I saw them, was it 80 in the Orange Bowl? Yeah, sure. When they came, and it was raining, and we were in the press box. I was with Mark, Mark uh-huh. Connie, and it was, uh, there was lasers, and it was raining, oh, and, and the pig was coming down yeah, the yeah, rail. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, I won't tell you what we're doing, but it was like, oh, my God, look. And then I saw them in um, uh, Austin. Have you seen the wall? No, I haven't seen Waters' awesome. Wall. Is it's it? awesome. Really? It's awesome. I saw it at Wrigley Field, and it's fantastic. I really want to go. What I liked watching was uh, was you 2 at the Spear. I'm dying to go. That thing's awesome. That looks that awesome, looks so man. cool. I yeah. mean, I can imagine. Can you imagine Pink Floyd doing it in there? <laughs> so, would be cool. so it's the band that uh, I mentioned it to my wife. I was like, if Roger Waters ever goes oh, against yeah, the wall, you gotta there, go. I'm, I'm, I'm going. That's See, it. The I'm favorite, in. one of my favorite things, and probably you remember yeah. this. You're, you're a little younger with me, but uh, was... Uh, Laser light show. Yeah, dude. I put it down. Yeah, man. Yes, man. And Pink you gotta bring Floyd. those back. Oh God, dude. Yeah, man. There, all your kids are like sitting there, like. <laughs> <laughs> those are great, yeah. man. Yeah. The, 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 but the, nobody hurt anybody, and, and there were no and camera was, phones. No, you know? man. It was funny. Kids <laughs> having innocent fun. All right. At this dinner with David Gilmore, you yeah. got to ask him one question. What's the question? Probably would be something more retrospective, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say, uh, are you happy with what you did in life? Are you content with where you are? Dude, you're a deep guy, man. No, something just for, like just, that. Just for, I thought you were just a regular barbecue, <laughs> dude. You got a lot going on, no, man. No, I'd have to say that. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's actually it's a great a, question. That, that yeah. one question can evolve to a many answers. For sure. You for know, sure. so I think I would leave it the question in his lap. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then see, what, see, see what he comes up yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, All right, so uh, we both went to Columbus. Mm-hmm. Do you think they'll ever bring You know, my dad went to Columbus, too. Your dad went to Columbus? 1958. He graduated before Carter Burst did. Him and Carter Burst. Wow. Burson. All right, I'm going to ask you a Carter Burst question. Oh, God, here we go. I had Dave Arbetters on here. Did you? I also had John Linsky. I don't know if you Oh, yeah, John. Okay. Yeah, so he was, yeah, he was on the yeah, outside. Yeah, we man. talked about the yeah. Almond Bros. Good I'll, buddies with uh, John and Jimmy, of course. All right, I'll, 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 I'll yeah. send you uh, uh, that episode. All right, Carter Burst. You know who he is. He's yeah, yeah. Jack, the most Jack 80 year old man. <laughs> he benching 300 pounds. Yeah. So he set his own bench press uh, record right. at Dave Arbetters. Yeah. But there's a rumor that the spotter helped him a little too much. Do you really? know anything about this rumor? I have no idea. I will not comment on that. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. You're time. not going to get to it. Carter, Carter and I, uh, we, we have cocktails occasionally. So. He, uh, we, we imbibe, you know, when when we were hanging out and he likes his barbecue, so we sit Has he named a, have you named something, one of your barbecue things after? Because that's what he likes planned. to do. I yeah. do have something planned. <laughs> you have something planned. Right. And I have to get his approval All right, we're going to send him this episode. You know, it's funny, I send the food truck over to Columbus all the time, too. Do you really? Yeah, I pull up in the circle over there by where the uh, brother's house is. Ah, oh, nice, man. And I serve over there because... Now they're fancy enough that they get little cards that they can buy whatever they want. And they get, you know, Cuban guys is there. They're like, what is <laughs> this, mean, bro? Yeah. Because we went to school, and, and I, you know, I can give you that one fact. I don't know if you remember this. You probably will. Yeah. I was the only dude, okay? You, I don't know if you ever saw the yearbook photo of me. I did not see the yearbook. Like, I'll, uh, I'll uh, send it to okay. you. It basically says, fly hair, she eat at Columbia. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it at that. You go look it up. It's in... 1984's yearbook. It was approved by Maria Ramo, uh, Ramos. Yes. Uh, so uh, I was, you know, I'll leave it at that, yeah. one at that. I was the only guy. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Tom Pennycamp's red Jeep? Remember that Jeep you used to have? It was a, a Jimmy. It was an old army Jeep. Oh, yeah, shit, he was man, before maybe. you. Yeah. But his this Jeep, okay, it was bright red. Yeah. You remember the parking was everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. The guy had a push button to start it, right? And I am the reason why... Columbus students don't have any more free periods. <laughs> Remember, you used to get two, two free yeah, periods yeah, yeah, yeah. junior or senior. Right. You backed that sucker up to lunch, you head to the beach. Right. <laughs> you, yeah, you couldn't drive off campus by the time I got there. Oh, no, we were yeah. all yeah. over yeah. the place, man. <laughs> you couldn't find us. <laughs> so we come back one time after a, a frequently uh, beef, che- beef steak Charlie's or something, yeah. you know, where they don't check your ID. They're gone now. So um, come back in and these guys run in the class, and I still got like 15 minutes left yeah. over. So I run around. There's Penny Camp's Jeep. Oh shit, let me do this. Start the thing up. I literally drove it back around, uh-huh. went into the main entrance in the A building <laughs> by Savino's office. Yeah, and yeah. you remember Lou of Savino? Course, of course. The dean of discipline. Yeah. <laughs> the father. The guy father was always was, in a bad mood. Oh yeah. man, he walked around like that. He was going to kill your yeah. ass, so it didn't matter. And I drove the Jeep oh, my God. through A building, through the courtyard, and then parked it right in the B building. And then there was the stairs that came down. I got out of the Jeep. I ran down, no cameras. I ran down the hall. 
the bell rang, and everybody's coming out, and there's like, what's he here, man? <laughs> there, and all of a sudden, you're in the like, Tom Penny Camp, can you come get your Jeep out of B building, please? You know, was, me, I was always, they always knew I was something. Yeah, you were into you. But you, Carter, let me tell you something. I mean, he's probably your favorite, too. Yeah, love him. Greatest teacher ever. Great guy. Great. Florida history? Yeah, Florida history, yeah. Yeah. Did you go do the, uh, I haven't done the airboat boat with him. I want to get him on the show, actually. You got it. I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell I'm, him. I'm, I'm, I'll tell him. Please tell him, because I've had ha half of his friends on. So, oh, my God. Uh, I'm, I'm going to definitely have him on. All right, so a couple more. Yep. Uh, Mount Rushmore of uh, bands. Your Mount Rushmore. Ooh, that's I'm, a good I'm, I'm one. assuming Pink Floyd's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, there's there's them. Um, I'd, I'd have to say Stevie Ray is up there, too. Okay. Just by himself. That's two. Um, Rush. Okay, you're Rush. <laughs> There's always a type of people either love Rush or they hate him. Well, you remember, it's like you ever see the Family Guy episode? It's like they go to Taylor Swift and it's all women, and they're and you go to Rush, it's all dudes. It's all dudes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a dude band. Yeah, it's a dude yeah, fest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rush, so I got one more here. Let's see if I don't screw this one up. I'm gonna think of a good one here. Oh God. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I'd have to say the Beatles. The Beatles, okay. I yeah. thought you were gonna say Zeppelin. You, you strike me as a Zeppelin. Yeah, guy. Zeppelin. Oh, maybe I, I could change the Beatles for one. I'd say, say I'd say no. Ze I love Zeppelin. Don't okay. get me wrong, yeah. but I'd probably change the Beatles for. Uh, and this sounds crazy too, but ZZ Top. ZZ Top. <laughs> they got so many great songs, man. They got so many. Billy great songs. Billy Gibbons, man. And that was the funny thing. Have you ever watched? There's a Dick Cavett show. You remember when Dick Cavett used to have a show? He was interviewing Jimi Hendrix. Uh huh. And he asked Jimi Hendrix, "Is there any influences that you ever had?" You know, the, for, you're such a master guitar master. Yeah. And he goes, there's this cat in Texas named Billy Gibbons. He's the best guitar player no ever shit. seen. Yeah, and he, he Billy, he, Jimi Hendrix said Billy Gibbons was the best guitar player Wow, ever. that's a major compliment. So I love music like that. My father raised me like that. Which yeah. is gr great music. You're driving down the radio, he goes, what song is that? What album? I'm like, it's Dave Mason, we just disagree. You know, I'm like, what? No <laughs> Three way. Dog Night. You know, like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's when you didn't have the phone. No, man, you had to remember. You had to drive four hours to a race. My dad used to race all the time. I and, got it. You know, I was like, you gotta have some fun. Yeah, you know, man. Music's awesome. Music's that right there. And when we're cooking, oh, oh you're jamming. We're jamming. You're jamming. Oh, what's on your playlist right now? Oh, right now, I got some crazy stuff. I was listening to a lot of Post Malone. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> yeah. He's good. Um, I I did a thing the other day. Where I gave a turkey away and I said, Can you finish this line? This lyric. Yeah. And it says, All I want to do. And everybody goes, Oh, it's Cheryl Crow. Yeah. Like, it's Cheryl, Cheryl Crow. Crow. And it was this song. I don't know, you guys probably hear it. Some people know what it is. It's called uh, Paper Planes. I and, know. And it's Why MIA. Do? And it's All I Want to Do is. Boom, boom, well, and, and that's a Clash song. You know that. that yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah, not her it song. It's exactly. a Clash. Yeah. It is a Clash song. That, no, there's another band. The Clash that, that, is they're the best. They're, they're, yeah. I'll show you I, in my office. I have yeah. a poster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them, but even after that, Big Audio Dynamite. Yeah. All that stuff. Anything Joe Strummer, all that. But you know what? They, now you got me rocking right there. We, really? We, I gotta, gotta I'm going to take both those out of there and give you the real one. Go. The Ramones. The Ramones. Okay. Well, on that, we're going to end this. How can people find out about uh, Pink Floyd and, and all the awesome food? Because I'm starving. I haven't tried it yet. Eat, but go eat, eat, man. Right I'm holding you up. Uh, social media is the easiest way to Social guess. media. I run all the, I run all the stuff. Uh, I, I collect DMs, IMs. Um, uh, Facebook, at Pig Floyd BBQ. Instagram, at the Pig Floyd BBQ. Okay. Um, www.pigfloyd.net. <laughs> <laughs> um, my number, um, you know, you got me all over the place. We're you gonna see put the it pig in the show truck notes. on the side of the road. And pull me over. <laughs> yeah, it's you, man. Yeah, bro, I'll do it, man. I'll do it. So. All right, man. Thank you so much for coming I'll on the show. Keep friends. doing what you're doing, buddy. Later, buddy.